はいnon plus yet is around three times the price of the high combo and it is worth mentioning also that at the time of the release of this video these two are the only two printers currently on sale currently nearly on sale that use this Creality CFS, which is the multi-material system that Creality have released. That's with some caveats, we'll get onto that briefly. Now, if you want to know more about the CFS system and how it works, then I have actually made a whole video about the K2 Plus in which I went into that. So I don't really hugely want to go into it again. I would advise watching that video. The high works identically in the respect of the color changing, even down to using the same filament buffer, which in this case is just stuck on the side with tape. It's VHB tape, which is made by 3M. And if you're thinking that's not a secure mounting method, I assure you it is. This stuff is used for permanent mounting. I wanted to remove the buffer for reasons I won't go into, and I frankly gave up. I couldn't actually get it to come off the machine. Um, it felt like it was going to break the buffer instead. I mean, you probably could with ISO, but let's not go into that. It is fine. Speaking of assembly of the high, that's pretty simple. I don't know how much footage I took of assembly, and I'll probably discover when I'm editing that they're isn't any but it is pretty obvious while assembling the high that this machine is made by mirror universe creality the creality product development team that i hinted at in the k2 plus video these people whoever they are they have their game together suspiciously well the design and assembly being surprisingly well thought out so the assembly is kind of a bit too easy the only thing I will say is at the point of connecting the CFS to the high, that is the filament changer to the actual printer, for some reason the two manuals are separate and there isn't really any guidance on how to put the two things together. It's not hard to do, but without a guide it's easy to forget, for example, to connect the filament buffer like I did. I don't have the footage of that happening, but it kind of just doesn't feed filament properly and it, it, it looks like the printer's not working. So. I'll make it clear here, the CFS has two cables and they're interchangeable, one goes from the CFS to the printer, the other from the CFS to the buffer, unless you have the Wi-Fi version which is pictured in the web page. The first thing that might strike you when you see this model is how much it looks like another printer that's on the market, and we would be remiss not to notice that and try to figure out what's going on here. It's weird because these two look almost identical to the inexperienced eye, but when you look closer, they are not identical at all, really. And yet, in some ways they are. I don't really get Creality sometimes. You would think that the moulds for casting this thing cost money, and that's not cheap. They'd want to reuse them, you would think, but apparently instead they didn't, or it doesn't look like it. The machine on the right is a Cortex-Z and the left one isn't. Now, that may have been for cost reasons almost certainly. There's linear rails in the form of rods on the right one, the left one has, and this is something you don't see often, the rail is a standard linear rail. It's mounted upside down, which I suppose is perfectly legal. 
If we look inside the machine, we see very little that we don't expect. The board is the same kind of clipper board that Creality have been using for the K2, and it's probably the same one that's in the Ender 3 V3 we just saw. I'd have to compare them to be sure. That's not the interesting thing here. The interesting thing here is that the high appears to have a mains bed. This is a bold move for a bed slinger. There's a saying in the... Well, there's a saying that I'm making up on the fly that if you're going to make a bed slinger with a mains powered bed, you better be confident about it. Otherwise, you will end up like the Bamboo A1. That machine had to have a complete recall over the mains bed. This hopefully is something that Creality have been smart enough not to copy from the Bamboo machines, but I think it's important to note that reviewers are not test engineers. We do a good job. We do a better job than we ought to, and often better than we're qualified to, with honestly very little recognition of that, but well, moving on. The high is obviously aimed at potential A1 customers, and this is such an obvious move for Creality to make because this machine is probably the best machine Bamboo makes. It's a shame they didn't recognize what makes me say that this is the best machine that Bamboo makes and replicate that part, the AMS Lite. The AMS Lite is probably the best single nozzle based color changing device to date because it doesn't have to wind the filament back a mile and a half every color change. That makes it faster and more reliable. Creality chose instead to use the CFS, which is based on the standard AMS. Fair enough, I guess. I'd better get this thing out of the way quickly before people think Bamboo are paying me to have it sat there. If you have a K1 series printer, you might have noticed there's an upgrade path to the CFS in the form of a kit, and it's only about £50 as well. I have it, I fitted it, at some point I will try to fit it in somewhere in some video, I don't know where it was going to go here. I can't show you it because while I happen to think that the adaptation of the case series to the CFS is exactly in line with my idea of what makes this hobby what it is, and I think it's a great idea, unfortunately it also has to work, and at the moment it doesn't. As far as I can tell this is a fixable firmware bug, but I'm working with Creality to try and solve that, so... I think I mentioned the size of the bed already at 256 by 256 and no prizes for guessing why it's that size, but what I didn't mention is how insanely good the adhesion is on the stock bed. I actually find it quite annoying for my purposes because things just don't come off it that easily. It is the same bed as the K2 Plus, but I guess I wasn't printing so many small parts on that review. Given that bed mesh, adhesion and first layer Z offset are usually where Creality have previously tripped up on printers, I can confirm that this machine has at least this unit here. It's nailed all three of them to the point that nothing has failed to stick so far in my tests. Also the bed is PEI or PE, it looks black like it's that old stuff that the Ender 3 used to use if you have been around long enough, it is not, don't worry, it's the same as the gold ones that we're used to seeing and it's the same bed as the K2 Plus, as I said already, but it does bear repeating. If history is anything to go by, there will also probably be smooth ones available in due course too, but we'll have to wait and see. Thank you. 
Nozzle-wise, we're using the Unicorn Long Edition. I don't know if they've named this thing. It's the K2 nozzle. There is an annoying downside to this length, though, and that's something that it shares with the K2 Plus. Whilst the extra length does increase the flow rate, it also increases the amount of purge you have to do. This is nothing new, though, and there's not a lot you can do about the purge on these kind of machines. But... I guess it would have been nice if they'd used a shorter nozzle for this machine because it doesn't have to have that massive flow rate that the K2 Plus kind of boasts. Yeah, there was an opportunity there, I think, that was possibly missed, but not entirely unexpected. One thing I do like to see on this machine is that Purge is done at 240C, or that's what it appears to be, which keeps the smoke down. I'll once again ask Bamboo publicly to address this on their A1 series machines because only they can fix that in the firmware. I do not believe that there's a need for a 250C purge on this kind of machine. In fact, it's probably causing a carbon buildup in the nozzle when you print PLA because PLA burns at this temperature. That's why it's making smoke. In terms of the UI experience on the high, it's exactly what you expect. You can set the filament on the screen and the filament has RFID tags if it's hyperfilament. This is Creality's own brand. Creality have also sent me Selenia, um, Selein, Selein filament, which doesn't have those tags on it, but you can set those manually. It does remember between power cycling, so it's not a huge deal. You only have to set it when you first put the filament in or when you change it. Creality Print 6 I find absolutely fine. I don't get the hate on this at all, and this is coming from me who makes slicer videos, so I think I know my stuff by now. If someone has anything substantial that they hate about Creality Print 6, feel free to put it in the comments, but I'm not seeing it. At the time of the review, the machine has no profile for TPU on the actual firmware of the machine, and it's not an exaggeration to say that it doesn't actually work with TPU. I think this is a combination currently of the firmware trying to purge too fast, as if it's trying to purge PLA, which you can't change, and the profile's not existing for TPU, so the closest thing you have is something called Creality HP TPU, which I don't know what that is, but it clearly has a higher feed rate, so it's probably something stiffer, like the equivalent bamboo TPU for the AMS. I realise some of you probably won't care so much about TPU on a machine like this, and that is a reasonable standpoint, but some of you will. I'll update the description if I get more info on the situation here. So I think in conclusion this is pretty much Creality's answer to the four colour printer for the masses, and I think it hits that mark with its relative ease of use and its relatively reasonable price point. It has very few downsides when compared against the K2 series. If you're a person who doesn't get into more advanced materials and you're sticking with PLA and PTG, and in this situation it's hard to justify that extra cost for the K2 series. I think when this machine finally is on sale, it should really be quite popular, especially in a market that's currently got very few available options for this kind of printer, at least at this price point. And with that, I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.